automatic transmission explained. Film strip four. Power flow of mechanical components, part two. This is part four of a six part series on the automatic transmission. It's recommended that parts one through three be seen before viewing this part. Before you begin, let's review the function and location of some of the main components in the transmission. Starting from left to right on your screen, they are the torque converter assembly, the front pump, the direct drive clutch assembly, the bands, the planetary gears, and the output shaft. Here are the valve body, the rear servo, the detent solenoid, and the governor and modulator. The film strip you're about to see will continue to explain the power flow of the 400 hydromatic transmission. During the last film strip, you saw how the power flow from the engine passed through the converter to the splines of the turbine shaft to the front clutch housing. During this film strip, the transmission power flow will be explained in all forward gear positions. Power flow in neutral and reverse will also be explained. Let's take a look at the neutral position. In neutral, power flow from the engine passes through the converter assembly, through the turbine shaft, to the forward clutch. Since the forward clutch pack is in the release position, no power can be transmitted from the torque converter turbine shaft to the rest of the transmission. Thus, the transmission remains in a neutral position. Now let's follow the black arrows of the power flow in art form. Notice how the power path stops at the forward clutch. Listed below the schematic are the positions of each sub-assembly when the transmission is in neutral with the engine running. Remember, you can stop the projector and view the schematic for as long as you want. Restart the machine when you're ready. The second position to be illustrated is called drive range first gear. In this range, power flow from the engine passes through the converter assembly, to the turbine shaft, to the forward clutch. With the forward clutch assembly applied, turbine torque is then transmitted to the main shaft, which turns the rear internal gear Clockwise. Clockwise rotation of the rear internal gear causes the power flow to pass through the gears of the rear unit while at the same time turning the sun gear counterclockwise, thus rotating the front pinions clockwise, which drives the front internal gear, output carrier, and output shaft clockwise giving the transmission a 2.5 to 1 reduction ratio. The reaction of the front pinions against the front internal gear is taken by the reaction carrier and low roller clutch assembly to the transmission case. Now let's take a look at this schematic. Follow the black arrows showing the power flow from the converter to the output shaft. Note. At this time, you may want to stop the projector so you can study this diagram. The next range is called drive range second gear. Note, the shift lever remains in drive position. During this range, power flow from the engine passes through the converter assembly to the turbine shaft, just as it did in first gear then through the forward clutch to the main shaft. The main shaft then passes the power flow to the rear internal gear in a clockwise direction. This causes the rear pinion to turn clockwise against the stationary sun gear. Thus, 
the output carrier and output shaft turn clockwise with a reduction ratio of approximately 1.5 to 1. During drive range second gear, the intermediate clutch is on. Application of the intermediate clutch pack allows the intermediate sprag to hold the sun gear against counterclockwise rotation. Let's take a look at it on this diagram. Notice how the black arrows pass through the subassemblies which provide the power that flows to the output shaft. Also, try to remember the position of each subassembly. The positions are listed below the diagram. Remember, you can stop the projector to enable you to study this schematic. Now let's consider what happens in drive range third gear. A reminder, the shift lever of the transmission remains in D indicating drive range throughout the drive first to drive third gears. The upshift is done automatically, as you'll see later on when the hydraulic part of the transmission is explained. During this range, the power flow from the engine is transmitted to the converter assembly through the turbine shaft to the applied forward clutch pack to the main shaft to the rear internal gear. Since the direct drive clutch is also applied during drive range third gear, some engine power also flows through the direct drive clutch pack to the sun gear shaft and the sun gear. At this point, the sun gear and the internal gear of the rear unit turn at the same speed. Practically speaking, the planetary gear set is essentially locked and will turn in direct drive as one unit at a ratio of one to one. Here it is again in art form. Have a good look. Check the position of each component by tracing the path of the black arrow. The position of each component is listed below the diagram. When driving the 400 hydromatic transmission below 70 miles per hour, it's possible to change to drive range second gear without doing so manually. This action is called detent downshift. When extra torque is needed, the driver depresses the accelerator fully. Doing this engages an electric switch at the carburetor. This switch will cause a detent solenoid to activate in the transmission. As a result, the hydraulic controls of the transmission automatically shift the transmission back to second gear. The path of power in detent downshift is exactly the same as that of drive range second gear. When the vehicle is driven below 20 miles per hour, a two to one downshift is possible, which simply means the transmission will automatically change to first gear, even though the operator doesn't change the range selection manually. Depending upon vehicle speed, relieving foot pressure from the accelerator will automatically cause the transmission to shift back into drive range third speed from the detent downshift three to two or two to one position as vehicle speed increases. The next range is called super. Super range keeps the transmission from shifting above second gear for hill climbing or to provide additional power. Actually, super range has the same starting gear ratio as drive range, but due to the operation of the hydraulic controls, it will only shift once more to second. This range is excellent for engine braking while on a downgrade with a heavy load. A reminder, a three to two downshift can be accomplished 
by manually selecting this range from drive range third speed. However, unlike the detent downshift, it will not upshift past second speed, regardless of the vehicle's speed. When descending down grades in second speed super range, the rear wheels are driving the transmission through the output shaft, creating a tendency for the intermediate sprag to overrun. To prevent the sun gear and direct clutch housing from overrunning, a front band assembly is added. It is applied to the direct clutch housing. This holds the housing stationary, keeping the transmission in second gear. Now let's consider the last of the forward ranges, which is L for low range. Low range allows continuous first gear operation as well as maximum engine braking. The driver can select low range at any vehicle speed. If so, the transmission will shift into second gear automatically. When the vehicle speed drops down to approximately 40 miles per hour, the transmission will again automatically shift into first gear. The transmission will not upshift out of first regardless of the vehicle's speed or throttle position. When the driver moves the selector lever to R, the transmission is able to reverse the vehicle. The path of power in reverse is from the engine, through the converter assembly, to the turbine shaft, to the forward clutch housing, then through the direct drive clutch to the sun gear shaft and sun gear. The rear band is also applied, preventing the reaction carrier from turning clockwise. Clockwise torque to the sun gear makes the front pinions and front internal gear turn counterclockwise in a two to one gear reduction. To repeat, since the front internal gear is connected to the output shaft, it turns it at approximately a two to one gear ratio. The total gear ratio between the converter and transmission in reverse is approximately four to one. Now let's take a look at reverse in art form and trace the path of power by following the black arrows. It's a good idea to stop the projector to allow yourself more time to look at the diagram. Park position on the shift selector quadrant enables the operator to park the vehicle mechanically by moving the shift lever to the P position, which prevents the output planetary carrier from turning. Looking at the transmission from the bottom, let's see how all this works. Linkages at this part of the transmission move a parking pawl. The parking pawl engages teeth on the outside of the output planetary carrier, which locks the output shaft. Here you see it in its operating position. The parking pawl has been partially disassembled to make this easier to see. This concludes part four. Let's see what you've covered so far using the diagram showing the path of power in the following gear shift selections. Remember to stop the projector to allow yourself time to study these diagrams. This is neutral. This is drive range first gear. This is drive range second gear. This is drive range third gear. Detent downshift to be used under 70 miles per hour automatically changes from drive range third gear to drive range second gear. Power path and detent downshift is the same as drive range second gear. Low range, used for maximum engine braking, first gear operation. The transmission will not shift out of first gear when the vehicle is operated under 40 miles per hour.
once the gear shift selector is placed in low range. This is the power flow in reverse. This is the parking pawl in action. It prevents the output shaft from turning. Be sure to see parts five and six of this series. They will continue to explain the operation of the 400 automatic transmission, showing the operation of the hydraulic controls.